Michael. Bill, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you for doing this. I can't believe this works. <laughs> Is this your first time doing something like this? No, I, I see, I'm in therapy on Zoom. So it's my first time uh, talking about what I supposedly know, know about on Zoom. Uh, well, that's good. How are you? How's, all, how's everything over there in New York? It's, uh, you know, it's a little hairy. It's a beautiful day, but it's, uh, it's still the streets are quiet. It feels deserted. You can't go out? A little spooky. A little, I, I don't know what actors are doing to keep themselves busy. What are you doing? Online. Everything's gone online, which is good, actually, because um, you're able to do classes with people that you know you could never really get access to like Ivana Chubbuck and people like that who've all done their classes um who've all gone online to do their classes so it's quite good so if you're in Australia you can work with someone in Los Angeles or UK in New York and is that I mean I have a friend who teaches at Juilliard she says it's she feels it's harder, but and, and also less effective. <laughs> less helpful be, to the actor. It is because it's funny because we the there was a there's a thing here in Australia where you submit your scenes for all the um, casting directors to see, so they send out a scene. So we practiced it for a couple of weeks over Zoom, and then the person that I recorded it with. We met in person and recorded it here in my house, and it was a bit it was a bit foreign because we had nailed it on the computer, but when we we're in front of each other, we couldn't really be intimate because we weren't used to it. We were used to the the, the computer screen. It's more intimate on the computer. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you for doing this, Phil. Happy to. I'm ha I, I hope I can shed some light on what you want to know because I. I know beans about the business in your part of the world. I would well, there's, there's lots. There's people listen to the podcast all over. So that we've got UK, USA, Australia. So, and everybody's trying so to I get into. I could be wrong these. in many different cultures. <laughs> we met. Uh, I I sent you an email because I am. Um, I downloaded your book, and uh, I find your book very interesting. It's quite a. Uh, you're quite funny in the book. I don't know if anybody's told you that, but I got a lot of laughs out of it. it. Well, yeah, good. I intended to be. <laughs> there's, some, there's some funny things in there, but uh, um, yeah. So I guess I'd like to start at just the the beginning. Um, so you were the first agent to ever sign Philip Seymour Hoffman, and uh, you saw you saw Phil at a, is it a play? It was a reading um, of a play at uh, an old theater company called Circle Rep which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, they were responsible for a lot of hits in the 70s, I guess. When You Coming Back, Red Rider, and The Fifth of July, and uh, Bomb and Gilead. They had, which, uh, Tally's Folly. None of these may, may be familiar. I don't know if they've lasted the test of time. But a lot of, most of them were Lanford Wilson plays. And, um, there was so they they had a wonderful theater company for maybe ten years, and uh, they all theater called nonprofits have to uh, justify their existence by turning out product, and mm. so they they have had a reading of a, of a new play every week, and a friend of mine, it, it was usually two nights, and a friend of mine saw the first night of this thing that Phil was in. And she called me and she said, you know, you do yourself a favor and go to the Circle Rep tomorrow and watch this kid named Phil Hoffman. And I did and I just was floored. I was just absolutely staggered. I mean, he, was, he is and always has been that good from the beginning. Um, so it was my job then to let everybody else know that because... Phil's not the, was the easiest person to sell. I mean, he walked around looking like an unmade bed and he had no intention of changing that. <laughs> he was a character. Yeah, well, how, he, uh, how important is that, Phil, for people to, or young actors to, um, and I guess does it still happen if you go to the, 
go to the theater as your stomping ground um do do agents or casting directors still go there to pick up talent or is social social media um the more important and the older agents uh probably don't go uh as my and if the older important and the and the older agents like i used to be we usually get a lot of people sent to them uh saying would you meet or it's a favor to me or this person is really good and you might like them but uh the young, the younger, and certainly the uh, assistants in the casting offices uh, are out looking for for talent all the time because everybody's working off the same pool. I mean, Meryl Streep is a, is as available to you as she is to Twentieth Century Fox. Right. I mean, somebody has to say no for her, but um, there's no. Uh, everybody needs to know the next new thing that's going on. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and uh, it's fun. It's fun to discover and say, oh my God, she's wonderful. You know? Yeah. Because it is a bit of a um, catch-22. You need credits to get an agent and you need an agent to get work. Yeah. Well, yes. Although... Some of the best advice I ever heard, it wasn't from me, from an agent in Chicago, uh, said to a room full of actors, we were doing a workshop of how to get an agent. And she said, uh, she was a very good agent. And she said to the actors, she said, you know, don't, don't worry about me. I will find you, find you. You just get some work. Get two lines in a movie, do a university movie, get uh, do a television show, get to know casting people get your hurl yourself into the business and i will find you because that's my job it, 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 by being the agent's job right so does that make sense you, yeah 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 so you you, you the you think it would be better to for a young actress to just uh, start getting involved in theater and worry about that don't don't worry about it. i don't know what the theater scene is like over there. I mean, you're all so gorgeous. Aren't, aren't you all doing movies? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, no, I think just, yeah. I mean, I talked, I ran into this kid who'd gone to one of the better schools um, a few years ago uh, recently, and I said, so how's your career? Who's your agent? She said, well, I don't have an agent. And, and I had an agent and they didn't really do anything for me. And I don't know, you know, don't whine about your agent. Go get yourself into a show. If, you, if there was a theater scene going on in Sydney or in yeah. the whole damn country, get involved. You know, do plays, do uh, at, at, at schools, at churches, people are looking for actors. You know, anywhere. Just act. Yeah, and I I, I, for, I forget it's uh, um, there was a a guy I'd seen in a in my office who I who I liked, and I, I said um, you know let me know when you're in something, which is a standard you know uh, leave me alone now. But I <laughs> but it, but it also I did like him, and. Uh, so he called a few weeks later and said he was in a play, which I didn't get to. And a few weeks, uh, a few months after that, he called, he was in another play. And I didn't get to that. And then he was in another play. And my assistant said, you know, you better go see this guy. And I said, well, you know, why do you, what's it to you? And he said, you know, he's been in five plays in a row. I said, well, so he's aggressive. That's good. And my assistant said, maybe he's a good actor. So I thought, oh, that's right. That's my job. And so uh, I was looking for good actors. So, uh, I mean, I was not receptive at that moment in time. But I think casting people, if, if they have any, any sense, go see plays in, in basements and small theaters and uh, rat-infested uh, uh, warehouses. I... Uh, <laughs> I just think, you know, 
And you'll also, you will meet people that way. That's another reason to, you know, even at, let's say you've gone to one of the best schools in the world, where, uh, it's another reason to keep studying because you meet other people in your situation and you hear about things that they're auditioning for, agents that they have found receptive, casting people who they find difficult. You know, mm. you, you just, you get to feel like you're part of the business, even though you're not making a dime. You're really, you're try, you're doing stuff for yourself. Yeah. And that, and that's, that's a turn on to somebody like me. Cause I think, you know, oh, then we can do this career together. You know? Is it a bit of a double threat though, Phil, if, if someone is passionate about theater and the agent is there to make money commission based, there's not much commission coming back from a, an actor doing theater. Um, cause I was told that don't tell a, an, an agent too much that you want to do theater cause they want to see that you're interested in TV and television. So that's where the, the dollars come back. Well, I think, yeah, I, 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 it's a, it's a good question, but I think what you want to do is, I mean, if you, if you're what I call an actor, you, you obviously want to do theater and the agent probably would, could care less. Um, they do, I don't, I, I think you can go on record saying, you know, well, I'm, I'm theatrically, tra I'm trained in the theater and I love the theater, but of course, my priority is movies and television. And, and they would like to hear that. And that's not really a lie. If, I mean, if you were in a play for 10 cents a, a, a week and you got uh, a nice part in a movie, you would, you would probably leave the play to do the movie. Mm. That, I don't, uh, the agent doesn't want to hear, oh, you know, the, the theater comes first. I don't want to hear that. If you're the kind of actor I like and respect, then the theater, of course, comes first. But it's, uh, you know, keep that to yourself, I think. Yeah, I was told that, um, I was told that yesterday from a casting director. He said, you need to keep that to yourself. <laughs> yeah. But, I, you know, because the only reason... I mean, I think you can mention it, that you love the theater. The only reason to make a point out of it is, because, is, is that you're telling the agent, you know, you, you're not I'm not necessarily, you're not necessarily going to be my first choice in making a decision if I have a play or a movie. That's combative. And it's, it's, you know, there's no point in doing that. So the only reason I can see for you to bring it up is, that you might have a problem if you got a call back for a, a movie and a theater and a, and a rehearsal for a play, you might, it, you, know, you might have a difficulty time making a decision. Well, I don't want to know that. Yeah. I guess if you're in a play for six to eight weeks, you're off the market for six to eight weeks for that agent. Yeah. For going I don't know what the reunion, the theater rules are over there, but most small theaters or, or not-for-profit theaters have uh, have an out clause if uh, if you get more remunerative employment you can leave the play uh, with three days five days a week's notice two weeks notice and the more the more successful a theater is what Lincoln Center for example which is a very successful theater has an eight week out clause and the play runs nine weeks. So, you know, it's, it, they're saying, you know, fuck you and your out clause. But I, I think you have to be prepared to use the out clause if, 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 you, are, if you get a job, not just for more money, but that, that will be good for your career. Mm. So I think, you know, and that's small theaters do a number on actors of, you know, we really, we count on your loyalty. Uh, we know we don't pay much money, but everybody here is passionate about what they do. All, all that stuff is, that's fine, but if they're really just trying to rope you in and make sure that if they hire you for a play in their theater, you don't leave. But that's not their decision, that's your decision. Out clauses, <coughs> out clauses are there for a reason. Yeah. So say you do get an agent, what can we do as actors to make the agent's um, job a lot easier? Because there is a myth that once you get, when you're a beginner, once you get an agent, you can sit back and you can just wait for the jobs to come in. No, but, you know, no, no, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, you can, on the other hand, don't be all up in your agent's face about everything. I mean, if you hear about five lines on a television show that you're right for, do not call your agent. See what don't. you can do to you. No. I mean, if, you, if they're looking for a new series regular on a television show that you think you're perfect for, and the person that wrote it um, used to be married to your mother, um, then maybe maybe you can call your agent and say, you know, I've got a connection there and I would like some help getting in. But um, no, I... Uh, so you say don't call or don't make any connections with casting directors? Oh, oh no, absolutely make connections with casting directors. I, yeah. I'll, I'll never take such a long pause again. No, no. <laughs> No, make connections with cast and directors. I'm just saying, no, if, if, if you hear about something that you can, that you're just perfect for, you would die to do, or, or you feel is a really good shot for you, then you can add, then ask your agent about it. And most agents will say, oh, yes, I submitted you on that. And that's, that's not enough. I mean, if it's mm. something that you are really passionate about, don't rest until you, they get you an appointment. Um, don't be a pain in the ass. You know, on, on the other hand, everybody I, I represented that has a sizable career, and there's a bunch of them, was kind of a pain in the ass. Kind of. They just, they wouldn't leave me alone if they felt strongly about something. I mean, they weren't all as bad as Leah Schreiber, who was, <laughs> was tenacious of going out. But, um, I think, you know, if, if you hear about something, if you call your agents, it used to make me crazy when people would call, clients would call and say, what's going on? With, by which they meant, how come I don't have any auditions? Don't tell me what's going on, you know, or don't ask me that. Tell me you saw a play last night that has a perfect part, had a perfect part for you, and you wonder why you weren't up for it. Uh, or you would like to be up for parts like that. And the agent may say, really? Do you think you can do that? I, I said that to Phil Hoffman once. I thought he was going to hand me my head. He, uh, he said they're doing a, a play called Holiday at the Roundabout. And, and could he be seen? And the Holiday is about rich people on the main line in Philadelphia. And there's part of an alcoholic brother. And Phil wanted to be seen for that part. But I thought it feels about a, a rich Philadelphia mainline person is, 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 is my mother. It's, you know, he's, that's not. And I said, gee, Phil, do you think you're right for that part? And he said, yeah, I do. Don't you? And <laughs> my blood ran cold because <laughs> my position has to be that a good client can do anything and a, a great actor can do really anything. And Phil Hoffman can do anything. So I, I fought like hell and I got on the appointment. The casting director was very unhappy with me because he said, you know, this is not going to cost me my job, but it's a waste of time. He's not going to get it. And um, I said, yeah, but you know, you, you, you've only seen him at, uh, at his school presentation at NYU. You didn't, you've never seen him really act. And uh, he said, okay, so I'll see him. So he gave me the appointment and he called me up and he said, you know, he's not going to get this part, but Jesus, he's a genius. He's real. And so that was worth my fighting for. But I think, you know, and if something, if you're wildly passionate about something, then, you know, ask your agent about it. If you're, if you're wildly, wildly passionate, make a pest of yourself. Then don't don't do that again. The because the agent, agents are very good at shutting actors down. So, right. You know they, they don't want to see you. I mentioned your name. They're, they're not they're not keen on you, or they're not fans, or they don't think you're right for this. Because put yourself on tape and send it to the casting director. Yeah. Don't send it to your don't send it to your agent. Put yourself on tape. People are more and more getting jobs on tape, right and left. That's coming up a lot. People are giving a lot of advice on saying, just put something on tape and send it to them. That's the, the part. Do you, be, do you believe in keeping a close relationship with, you, with clients or keep it really businessy 
with with you with the actors because it, sometimes it can be the job of the manager right to guide the actor on the career yeah, choices yeah. The, i i love good managers phil had a wonderful manager um and and jobs or careers come out of the interaction between the agent and the manager and if they get competitive with each other it's not good it's not good for the actor so i think i like uh, there's a, there's a very good agent in new york who's who becomes her agent's best friend her client's best friend um i don't i don't i don't think you need to do that that's her mm -hmm. way of controlling and then she also starts controlling your choices which you find you have less and less say in so that's not good i don't i don't like to become friends with actors because it's not that being their friend is not my job my my job is to get them work and uh and if they leave me i don't want them to break my heart because <laughs> i love them in addition to admiring their ability right so i think you know you know, give your agent a nice present at Christmas and call it a day. I don't, you, you don't keep trying to have drinks with them or go out with them. Or, I don't think that's necessary. What's the kind of qualities you'd look for an actor, Phil? Besides, they have to act, of course. But what's the other kind of qualities that stand out to you and you say, yeah, that's, that's somebody I can work with? Well, I like somebody who, uh, who knows what they're right for who, um, the kinds of stuff they write for. I said to a young woman uh, after her school, who, she, who was beautiful, after her school presentation, and I said, so what kind of stuff do you want to do? And she said, well, young women, obviously. And I thought, well, fuck you, obviously. And I, <laughs> um, I said, well, what kind of young women, you know? Nice young women, mean young women, rich young women, calculating young women, warm as, you know, women that remind you of your mother. What kind of what kind of young women? You know, the more you can define yourself clearly, and what kind of stuff you're right for. I know you're an actor, and I know you have range, but the business doesn't give a damn about your range until you're Kate Blanchett. Then they won't leave you alone. They say, you know. I'd like to play this ugly old woman. You know, she'll say, I love it. But, you know, it's not going to happen in the beginning. Kate Blanchett should say, I'm gorgeous and I want to play gorgeous women. That's, um, that's a turn on to me, somebody who knows what they're like. Um, somebody who doesn't throw up obstacles, saying, uh, well, if I'm in a play, that's a priority over a movie. I don't want to hear that. Uh, <laughs> uh, somebody who is actively involved in the business. Like uh, everybody, every young actor I remember wants to do television because there's good stuff on television. None, nobody, none of the young actors I've met watches television. Mm -hmm. Well, that's stupid. I mean, just, what, see what they're buying. See what kind of actors, what types of actors certain shows like, yeah. and what their rhythm is like. I mean, even even you know, even a, one soap has a different rhythm than another soap. So that, that you may have a good audition, but you might not just be there for you. You might not be their kind of guy. Well, you want to find out what their kind of guy is by watching what they do. You, you said um, before, let me ask you a question. You were saying you, that casting directors send out scenes for you to put on tape. Is there, how many, is there a finite number of casting directors there? Or, I mean, are there okay. 10 casting people or 20 or 50? It's, a, it's a very small market here, very small. And um, you could say the main ones was probably here in Sydney. You could say the big ones, you'd be pushing about 10. Ten, um, yeah. Well, that's lovely. That's 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 wonderful. Um, mm. And how? 
So, and, and each of those casting people have, are they, are they large operations or do they have like one or two assistants? No, like the, you, the, oh, some maybe, the bigger ones, the two or three would have about four people and then the other ones will be just the main casting director and the casting assistant. Um, it's, it's a very small market. Um, and there's, it's, it's a I big... How you, I don't know how you do it over there. I don't know how any actor does it. But get to know as many casting people as you can. There's a, there's a, uh, a sort of a myth that agents, or that actors and casting directors are at cross purposes. But they're not at all. I mean, casting people have, have the jobs. Actors want the jobs. So I think they love, and most casting people are in it because they love actors and they respect actors. So they, and if you get to know them a little bit, I mean, if, if one casting director smiles at you, don't say, can I buy you a drink? You know, <laughs> but I mean, if, if somebody seems predisposed to you or, or that they obviously think you're a good actor, then um, try and cultivate that. Yeah. Drop them a note saying, you know, I saw this thing that you cast, 10 years ago, boy, you, boy, you have such a good eye. It was so fabulous. Just, you know, that's not an insult. Yeah. And it's obvious, it's obvious that you're saying, hey, remember me, but that's okay. They don't, they don't mind that. And they mind if you're a pest, mm. but they, but they, it's fun for casting directors to know, to know the best actors. And, uh, but it's like, I say, I don't know if young actors or unemployed actors wait on tables in restaurants over there. Of course, there's no restaurants anymore. But um, it, there's a, the, the back of the house, which is the kitchen, and the front of the house, which is the dining room, are adversaries. They're all, you know, they all hate each other. Actors and casting directors should not hate each other. Agents and casting directors couldn't hate each other. But... Um, but casting directors are on your side. Also, I mean, if you're talking to a casting director or just doing a personality test after, after, you've, read the, after you've read the scene and they're just talking to you, you know, you can say something about, uh, about them. You can ask about them because they, they, they like that you ask about them. And mm. they like that, um, that you are clearly you, that, that you want them on their side. They're not, they're not going to say, oh, I don't, know, I don't even know where I'm going with that thought. Let's move on to something else. But they, there is, there's, there's um, one of the bigger casting directors here in Australia. His name is Greg Apps. <clears throat> he does all the movies, so the Mad Max movies, things like that. He uh, said to me that um, the small ones. <laughs> he, yeah, he said that he said exactly the same thing. He said we love actors, and he said in the casting world, we we all want to f discover that new talent. We all want to be the one who I f I discovered him. So he said we need you guys. We love you guys. We want to see you guys. You know, we're all in this kind of together kind of thing. He said it's as it's as competitive for the casting directors as it is for the actors. And it is because and, and casting directors who cast a certain kind of movie may want to cast another kind of movie. You know, they want to. So yes, it's very competitive, and and you are you know brothers under the skin, and that's that's good. I mm. sent Billy Crude about to test for something for a for a pilot in the days when he would have done a pilot, um, and and this casting director who was. Who, casting that, that pilot, um, put him on tape for something else and sent it to every important person in California because he thought he was so good and everybody and he got credit for discovery because, I mean, that doesn't happen a lot. But, no. but Billy was a big find and everybody knew. Yeah. You mentioned something in your book that was quite interesting to me. You said going to a bigger agency is not always better because they're going to push their bigger talent and you'll just get lost at the back. 
it's better better to be a bigger fish in a smaller agency I think so I think so it may, most actors coming on the scene don't sign with large agencies but they all kind of want to and so when you, when the when the business starts to take notice of you that's when the large agencies move in on you and I think you Even then, there's no reason to leave your small or medium-sized agent if you feel they're doing a good job. The agents at the large offices have, do a very good job of knowing how to make you unhappy with your representation of all the things you're not in. I think, you know, as long as the agent is uh, one step ahead of you in your career, let them work. You know, every, every goddamn actor leaves their goddamn first agent. Except for Jack do Nicholson. Li- do they leave or do they get poached, Phil? Do they leave or do they get poached? Oh, they get poached. Poached. They definitely get poached. But they are willing to be poached. Some of them are saying, you know, if, if they, their first great review in the, in the New York Times for a Broadway play, they'll think, ah, now William Morris is going to want to talk to me, you know? don't don't hold out for that I think you know if frequently large agencies can do a good job for you but they're but because they have all they're spending all that money knowing more than anybody else about what's coming down the pipeline mm. but I mean if if everybody's starting to notice you then the casting people and the studios and the networks and Well, know about you. They don't need William Morris to tell them about you. They've already heard that you're the new big thing. So I, and also even when you're famous, you know, when, when Glenn Close became a, a star in Barnum, she, uh, she was poached by ICM and, uh, from, her, from her small agent. And so she went to ICM. And she, they sent her all these scripts, and she began to realize every script that she read had been offered to Meryl Streep first. And Meryl Streep was also at ICM. And she thought, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. And so she left. <laughs> how did she leave? Oh, yeah. And how can you, because I know here in Australia, it's really... Um, As I, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's, lo- it's a lot of commercial, fast turnover, quick commission. How can you not fall into that um, category of just being a commercial actor with your agent and really want to push into television or film? Because I think a lot of agents... What do you mean by commercial? Do you mean there's a, are there a lot of soaps over there still? Uh, commercial as in adverts. Oh, adverts. Oh. On the TV. It's a whole different thing. You mean commercials? Yeah. Commercial, commercial? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, shaving like a, cream and toothpaste and all that? Cor- correct, yeah, like car insurance, things oh, like that I, on the TV. Oh, that's a whole different ballgame. I mean, I, I, do they have the same agents for commercials as they do for theater and movies? A lot here is a lot of commercials. So you're up for an insurance advert, you're up for the Pizza Hut or McDonald's advert, and you kind of get stuck into that because it's quick money, quick turnover, a couple of days, done. Well, then, I, you know, you... you If, if it's a if it's there's a lot of copy on it maybe you can get a good piece of film out of it you know I don't I don't think you shouldn't do that I if, if you find your agent you can say you know uh, I don't want to get stuck in this you know do do two or three commercials and if all the other activity starts going away and all they're concentrating on its commercials you Then you can speak up and say, "You know, I know the commercials are not the reason I'm in this game. Mm. You know, we, I did a few, you made some money, I made some money, I got some film. Now let's you know, I don't want to do anymore." Or they'll say, "But everybody loves you. They're really not, you know they'll say, "Well, then get me double scale when I do." And then get, <laughs> me, get me triple scale, or I won't do it. Because if you I mean, I think you should go, I think you should be seen for everything that it, you can get your ass into. I think you should be seen for everything. Um, if you find that your career is going in a direction that you don't like, that you have played five gay axe murderers in a row, that you're, then you could say, I'm not going to do that anymore. 
But I mean, there's, don't, and if you sit down with an agent and, they, and you're really handsome or really beautiful or really whatever type is working in commercials these days, uh, and they see dollar signs, you know, let them see dollars. Let them then go for that. You can say, I want to, I want to, I'm, I'm going to be a name actor anyway. Just go on record. With that. You don't have to say, and don't you forget it. Or don't think, you know, that they're, they're going to, they're just going to, use you for your looks or your type or you know just speak up don't don't if you get sucked into that that's your fault right after a while say no if they say well i don't see me sending you you know i don't see me sending you out for movies if you're not willing to do commercials say well then you know i guess i'll have to get somebody else Mm. what would be your best advice phil for um for we always do our best audition on the way home what's your best advice for actors going in in front of them big casting directors and just battling them nerves for for um i guess you know stumbling up and because we always then on the way home or we get home and we do it and we go that's what i should have done but the nerves yeah get the well better you of know us. that's the that's the nature of the business really right. i think I, I don't know what you can do about that, except except don't say don't say that in the audition, or don't say to your agent, "I wish I had a buck for every actor that called me after an audition." Say, if you could just get me back in the room, I can I know what to do. <coughs> yeah, and I said uh, the only person I ever did that for, the only person I ever tried to get back in the room was Billy Crudup, and I, he got him back. I got him back in the room, and he got the job. But I mean. He never, ever asked me for that before. Most actors, it's like, you know, a knee-jerk reaction. God, if I could just have one more chance. I think you can do it. If, if, if it's a job you really want, you can say, when you walk in the room, you can say, Christ, I'm really nervous. I really want this. And then, and then, <laughs> and then, let, and then let it go. Yeah. Don't, you know, they know you want it. But if, if, if you're saying that to sort of exorcise your nerves, they probably can see that too. And that's, and that's smart of you. And that's good of you. Mm. Yeah, that's good. In, in your book, you um, reference a lot of Sandy Meisner. Um, I, love, I love Sandy Meisner. So there's a Meisner school here in Sydney that I went to for a couple of years. And Billy, he actually studied with Sandy for years over in the US and then brought it back here. Um, so do you think that someone methodly trained is a lot better to take on um, rather than someone without that kind of training, I guess? Like a method actor, so Stella Adler or Sandy Meisner. Is that better for an agent to see on the resume? Um. Well, if you're studying with somebody like that, with, I mean, the, the three giants of the field were Strasberg and Stella and, and uh, Sandy. And um, it just means to me that you're a serious actor, that you, you know, that you, that you probably want to do theater and, uh, and that you are a, a, a trained person. But I think, you know, Claire Danes never went to acting school in her life. And I, I don't... It's what, what works for you. Um, I, I know there's this great acting teacher in New York uh, who also coaches for auditions. And um, I, have, uh, I had a client once that asked me who had an important audition, I guess, for Mike Nichols or something. She said, and she said, I want to coach. Uh, well, then could you could you recommend a good coach? And I said, well, what about this woman you studied with? And she said, oh, she's a brilliant acting teacher, but she doesn't know beans about how to coach. And how to coach is basically how to get a job. Right. So that just means if if you've studied with somebody who is slick and savvy to the business, and maybe is a casting director as well. That just means that you're you're taking care of business, right? Did you train as an actor yourself, Phil, before becoming an agent? 
Tell me. Uh, <laughs> you didn't say you were going to ask me that. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. Right. Uh, with Sandy and with, with one of Sandy. His, yeah, and one of his um, associates, one of his one of who I who I went with almost immediately, and he was, but he was as big a fan of Sandy as I was. Sandy was a Sandy was a brilliant acting teacher. He was a mean guy. But uh, he has that reputation too. But uh, but no, I, it wouldn't turn me off. It would just mean to me that if, that you, if you had a a method, I mean, I don't think there is such a thing as method acting. There is there is good acting and bad acting. Um, the only thing that might be a little uh, of concern. Is is if you if you lean on it if you lean on how much you love the method and how much you love Lee Strasberg and how Sandy Meisner changed your life and if you lean on that, I th they may think, oh God, is this guy going to be a pain in the ass? Is this guy going to be difficult? Mm. Is he going to be some devoted, dedicated artist? Yeah. You know, because you know, I mean, doing the repetition exercise. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But uh, but that's that's even even Sandy would say you know that's the classroom that's not work. Somebody wants to, if you studied for ten years with Stella Adler, I, it wouldn't impress me. I, I, if I had a job for you, I'd want to know what what jobs you'd had and right. what kind of work you enjoy doing. I mean if. Back to what you said about you know what what kind of actor do I want to represent is that if if you do if you do something well I want to know what you think you do well I want to know what you think is like a perfect job for you if you make a list I ask students to make a list of the uh, their ten favorite actors. And, f and then research what their first job was that made them a star. What, what job made the whole business sit up and take notice and say, oh, this person's good. And then what was the part like? It was generally the part that makes you famous is pretty close to who you are. So I don't think you need to start worrying about your range because mm. in the beginning, everybody's gonna say, well, what can I do with you? The agent's gonna think, what can I send you on? And the casting director is going to think, what can I bring you in on? Because you're going to get something that yeah, you're I think right you, for. They don't want to see you do something. They don't want to hire you because you look <clears> like <throat> that and, and you could play something totally different. Worry about that when you're famous or when you're, when you're more... You, you mentioned it in your book that if you met with someone and you said to them, you're kind of funny, you should do comedy. And they usually say, no, I'm more of a drama guy. I think we... We perceive, perceive ourselves as different than someone else perceives us. Well, you could say, you know, that's interesting. I love comedy. I don't get sent for it a lot, but I love comedy. Thank you for saying that. You can get that, you know, that gets a lot of information in there. Mm. Um, if I think, but if I say, oh, you're funny, I just mean, do you think you're funny? I mean, if I think you're funny, don't tell me you're not. Yeah. Yeah. You can say, you know, you like, you know, people do you for the more angsty Tom Hardy kind of stuff, you know, but, but you say, no, I, I can be funny. I love, I love funny. You know, I, an old, I love this story. I, I used to represent Brian Dennehy. He wasn't my client, but he was the head of the agency's client. And uh, do you know who Brian Dennehy was? Mm, oh, you don't. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. it's not a good story. You don't know. <laughs> Tell it. Maybe even a lot of people. Denny, is he Irish? Uh, he's Irish, but he didn't play. Yeah, he, he looks. He's got the map of Ireland on his face. Yeah, <laughs> but he was a big deal for a while. Right. And um, I never thought he was very good. But he's a, he was this big, burly, uh, funny, intelligent, weirdly pretentious guy. 
And so my boss and I went to see him in this play. And I, I still, I didn't understand. I knew he was like one of our biggest clients, but I didn't understand why he was such a star. And I said to her, I said, I, you know, Brian's really not that good. Why is he so, why does he make so much money? <laughs> and she said, well, if you want somebody, if you want Brian Denny and he's not available, who's your second choice? By which, if you don't know Brian Denny, he, she meant oh, I do know nobody him. else like him. I just see him now. I searched him. Yeah, Brian Denny. I know him. Yeah. You know, so you know the face. Of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing is, you, you, what you want to do is be aware when you go to meet anybody who can give you a job, you want them to know who you are and the kind of job that you that you want to get. That doesn't mean that you're not flexible. But there, if if I think you know, you're some mousy little bank clerk who's secretly a serial killer, and you think you're a superhero, then you know. We're not, I'm not going to work for you, and you and you and you shouldn't want to work for, with me. Mm. You you should want somebody who was. And if you think you are defined by having a very large range, try and get over that in the beginning because they're going to want to know what to do with you. Yeah. Phil Hoffman used to. I sent Phil Hoffman to see this great casting director, and I said, "Did you like him?" She said, "Yeah, I liked him, but what's he right for?" I said, "You just spent half an hour with him. He can do anything." She said, Philip, everybody says that. Come on, you know that. What is he really right for? And uh, you should know that. You know, like, what are your, what, what are your three favorite performances? That'll, that'll be a clue to somebody you are meeting about how they can help you. And if, 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 I, if I meet you and I, you know, and I think you're, a leading man, and and you think you're a character actor, then then you know we need to keep talking because that's probably not going to work. But I I think you need to know what it is, how you would how you would like to be perceived, how you want other people to think of you. Yeah. So. So anyway, you, I, did, did I wiggle out of your Sandy Meisner question? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I uh, I. I do like, I do like trained actors. I did train. I don't think it gave me an advantage. I mean, I, I made a, I made a living for a while. I was cute, you know, so I, I, I made a decent living, but I wasn't very good and I knew it and I knew it. And so I just did it for like five years. So, <laughs> so you went, you've, we got, we have to talk about the book and, and now you, what you're doing now. So you've c completely, um, gone away from representing actors and now you consult and you've and you writ the book how come you went away and did that firstly how come you writ, you writ the book and then secondly how come you t went to consulting rather than representing oh well i i had my when i stopped when very I was, interesting. my last agency job was my own agency and um and the business just wasn't fun anymore I mean, it is all about poaching now. It is all about finding somebody who's unhappy with their agent and stealing them. Or if they're not unhappy, making them unhappy and stealing them. There is very little loyalty anymore. I think there's very, and I used to, I mean, I like, I like actors that are hard to sell. I like Phil Hoffman's hard to sell. What do you do with him? Lee F. Schreiber in the beginning was hard to sell. Um, and I think, that's, that's fun for me, but it takes an extra four or five phone calls. It takes an extra lunch with the casting director. It takes an extra uh, browbeating of them uh, to, to, to give my client a break. And, 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 there, and agents don't have that much time anymore. I used to be at a wonderful agency called Writers and Artists. They're part of Paragon now. And... Uh, they what was I saying? Um, 
of the industry. Oh, and so, uh, yeah, and they, they would, I don't know, they, they decided they were, they were going to be important. I used to have a bunch of clients with them, and they were going to start poaching other people's clients, and so I, I stopped doing business with them. But you can't, you can't get picky. You can't start having scruples. And, uh, and I thought, if somebody is hard to categorize or hard to get a job, my fun is in spending the extra time it takes them to get attention paid to them. And these days, I don't have that time to spend. Oh, I know what I was going to say about writers and artists. When I went to writers and artists, they had 100 clients and five agents. When I left, they had 100 clients and two agents. Because the work just got split up, and just people don't have you don't have the extra time to spend in, uh, about on somebody you really care about, and that's so that's why I I, I stopped agenting, and right. um, I moved to Seattle to be with my uh, daughter and my grandchild and my wife, and my wife got sick and passed away, and so I moved back, but I really never ever considered representing actors again because it wasn't fun. It used to be really fun. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to get a lot of money for somebody who I believed in. And now if they're above the title, you can get several million dollars. And if you're <clears> below <throat> the title, you get scale. That's it. And, and I, I, I didn't believe that. But it's 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 true because I, I used to the, the, I would get great money for people. I'd say you know if that's all you're gonna pay, I'm not. Then you know goodbye, thank you, goodbye. And then they'd call me back and say, okay, we'll pay. But now they don't do that anymore. They move on to their second choice. Mm. And did the book come first before the consulting or? Well, so anyway, so then I was back here. I was um, just hanging out, teaching a little bit. Uh, teaching really what evolved into the book. And I, I was at this place called the Actors Center, and the guy that ran it sat in on my class one day because I had a class in, you know, how to get an agent, how to get a job. And, um, and he, he said, so are you writing a book about, about this? I said, no, why should I? He said, because he said, I think what you say is great, and you should write a book. <laughs> It's so, it's so like, it's a great book. I had to, I had to listen to it two times, but it's so, so funny. Like even my, my partner, she, she's got nothing to do with acting. She doesn't like it at all. And I had you on loudspeaker in the kitchen. She was like, this is interesting. I could listen to this guy. Because the stuff you say is just so funny. You don't know it's coming. Like there was a line. That's if your agent even has a heart. Here's the book. Yeah, it's, it's a book. And, uh, but I prefer, I think the audio version is, if somebody wants to listen to it, it's very, very worth listening to. I'm a big okay. book on reading. Well, you, you give it to all your friends that aren't actors, for God's sake. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. I, I appreciate you saying that. But yeah. it's, um, so as a result of the book, and now people do read it, and they call me and say they want a consultation. And I, so I'll do usually a 90 minute consultation with somebody who, who says that they want to have a consultation because their career's in the toilet, their agent sucks, and, uh, and they're not doing anything wrong. Well, my job in 90 minutes is to find out what you're doing wrong. <laughs> because, I mean, most agents, are not the most sympathetic people in the world or the smartest people in the world. Mm. Most casting people are not um, the warmest people in the world. But the thing is, you just, you want them to know who you are. And so, and so I was trying to find a way to let actors tell people who they are without looking greedy or eager or, I mean, if you think you're one thing in a, in a cast, I've said this before, if you think you're one thing in a casting director thinks you're another, then they're probably, they're not going to get you. You've got to show them, you've got to get to where you're in sync. 
Right. Do you, do you do your consultations in person or do you do them like this, Phil, over Zoom? In person. I do them at home. If, if somebody... I've recently... Been, I get called periodically from Los Angeles or London or Sweden. Or so. I think, you know, I don't know anything about the business there. I, mm. I know what to tell... I know what doors to tell people to knock on in New York. Right, I, right. But I, in talking to you, I feel like I've said a few worthwhile things. So maybe I don't need to be in the city where I'm talking to the person. Because I think there's something universal about, about what I'm trying to say. <coughs> well, which I, is, I think that the USA... Find out who you are and so on, right? Yeah, I think, uh, I think the USA is one step ahead of everybody else. Um, I feel like Australia is always on the catch-up to... USA and everybody well, it seems in every time there's a new leading lady or a new leading man in some great new project it's in Australia right everybody's you guys, to get in there, you got people <coughs> do you know which casting directors the the Australian casting directors do you know who who their favorite casting directors are in Los Angeles? No. Could you, well, try and work that out. to so say, no, who do you like? Or who's your pal in Los Angeles? Mm. Who should I know? And send your picture and resume. And say, you know, I'm going to be there one day and I'm going to want to meet you. Okay. okay. So if there's anybody watching um, that wants to do a consultation, you don't do them online. You more or less focus on them. I'm on Zoom. On Zoom. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't like Skype, but for some reason I hate it. I do them on Zoom, um, or, and it's 90 minutes, it's $195, um, and that's, that's it. I don't, uh, if, you know, I, and it's not $195 and I'll never talk to you again. And, you know, if you've got follow-up questions, if you want to, if you want me to look at footage on you or advice on your pictures, or something, just you can feel free to call me after that. Not yeah, because we're going to put, I'm going to put a link to your website, a link to the book in the show notes. And I know that a couple of my active friends have already started to go and download the book from Amazon because I was, I was raving about how, how informational it is. I was to say, great, that you're downloading. No, you're not supposed to <laughs> buy it. Don't you? Yeah, you got to buy it from Amazon. Yeah, but um, do you recommend if someone is, well, I recommend, I definitely recommend that if somebody wants to have a consultation with you, I definitely recommend reading or listening to the book first to get to know you um, because there's a lot of information in there already and then go in with then go in with their questions to you. Do you recommend that or just have a consultation with you? I don't, um, I think most people who ask for a consultation have read it. That's right. why they come to me. Because yeah. I used to say, you know, if you read the book, you don't need to talk to me. And I think, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, can, I, can, I can help you, but I can help you even more if you've read the book. Because I think there's a lot of, you have to find out how, how something applies to you. It may not seem, it may not seem it. I always like it when somebody says, you know, you say this in your book. I think that's wrong. I love hearing that because then we can talk about it. You know? Right. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever, ever represent an actor again? Or call a casting director to look at this actor? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I might do that. You might. I will. I, I might. Well, I have, in fact. Call and cast people. But, um, but the thing is, you know, I don't, Do when I was it? an agent, if, if a casting director asked me to meet somebody, I said, of course, because, you know, I, uh, I'm not in the habit of saying no to casting directors. But um, I don't like, uh, recommendations from other people are very, it's very iffy. I mean, the actor has to strike a note in me. When Dustin Hoffman sent me this actress once, and I said, you know, well, you know, when I can see you do something, let me know. 
I didn't much like her, but I, she seemed nice. And uh, Dustin called me an hour later and he said, how dare you tell a woman you need to see her work? I told you she's a great actress. I said, yeah, fine, Dusty, but you know, what am I supposed to do if somebody's casting a movie and I recommend her and I say, well, they said, well, she doesn't have any credits, just as one movie. And I said, well, you know, Dustin Hoffman says she's a good actress. That's a lame thing to tell a casting director. <laughs> so I can't, I don't want to take recommendations from anybody else. I want to say that I think they're right for it. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I had a casting director who wanted to pre-screen Liev Schreiber <laughs> when he was starting to be well-known for some movie. And I said, you should know who he is. He's not going to pre-screen for you. Get him to the director. And she's saying, are you telling me I'm a bad casting director because I don't know him? I said, that's exactly what I'm telling. <laughs> well, see, you, you can't, you can't do that today. <laughs> yeah, that's good. We're coming up there. Well, we're gone. We're gone over an hour, Phil. But is there anything oh, you'd right. like to well, finish? No, I have, are we an hour? Yeah, well, not, we're on the dot to me. Do you want to, do you want to finish up with anything and anything you'd like to say? I don't know. What, the, what, what is the protocol? Was, do you have to, will they shut us off? or will this No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But I don't okay. want to keep well, it. Well, I, I don't think... That, we didn't even have a time. I thought you'd want an hour, and so that's fine. But uh, we can go a few more minutes. What do you want to? Yeah. No, what just do you want to hear? Always ask if there's anything you want to finish up with, or anything you want to say. Of course, we're going to have everything in the show notes to your website and to the book, so people can, when they watch this, they want to find out more about you. But anything well, I else think you yeah, okay. My only, I guess, to sum up would be advice: is you know, is is work. Just just keep always work. I never is, oh, that's the wrong job, or oh, that's not good enough, or that's not enough money, or that's not enough, your co-star isn't famous enough. I don't understand things for, uh, Matt Dillon turned down a movie because he wouldn't share billing with, oh, I don't know who it was. I think it was uh, Alec Baldwin. And, um, that was, that was, that's, that's thinking from the Stone Age. Always work. I think if you find yourself not repeating yourself in the kinds of jobs that you get, you can, you know, say to your agent, we've got to get me, we've got to open up some new avenues here for me. Mm. You know, and, and then, and then cast, because casting people know that you will work, that you'll be good in as, as five lines playing, uh, playing a crooked lawyer, but you know, what, what if you wanted to do 20 lines playing a nice lawyer or what are you going to, you know, you just always, always, I don't mean ride them, but just keep after, keep after your representation to make sure that you're, it's going, that your job, your career is going where you want it to go. Yeah. In a polite and make sure you know where. Make sure you know where that is. Just well, I'm an actor. I can do anything. I just want to work. Is not the right answer. So you think really find out, like, what you're, like, casted for, like you typecasted. Find that out. The people's minds when they see. You. Right. Oh, you should do this, and you know, and do that two or three times, and then. Do something else. That's and that's because Greg Apps, the casting director, was speaking to last week. He said the, exactly the same thing. He said, "Find out what you're good at, keep putting down them tapes, nail that, and keep pushing that out. Because when that time does come around, and they need, say, a doctor, they think of you. And keep just keep developing that material. Don't don't go broad. It's always he's a <coughs> smart casting director. Always have there in the background." that you are someday going to be capable of carrying the movie. And what kind of part will that be? Right. You don't want, you don't want to be a lawyer or a policeman or whatever. You know, ultimately, when you start, yes, you will. You can be. I was on Entertainment last night, uh, Entertainment Tonight, last night on television. Uh, they showed three movies, three clips of different movies 
where Brad Pitt was an extra. And I didn't know he'd ever been an extra. Well, he, he said, you didn't, you, I didn't know you'd ever been an extra. He said, I only did it three times. Well, so don't do it. I mean, if they love you as an extra, don't let them cast you 20 times. Say, you know, I'm ready for a job. And if they love you for, you know, a one scene part, get ready for a supporting part. If you get, and get ready for a lead part. Uh, have it always be there. I remember Phil Hoffman, again, was doing a play at the Vineyard Theater, and the, and the artistic director called, this may be in the book, the artistic director called me and said, you know, this guy's really, he's just all over the map. He's, do we have to put up with this stuff? And he, I said, well, no, you don't have to put up with anything. Tell him, uh, well, is he a problem? He said, well, he's kind of annoying. I said, well, tell him, well, what, what does he say when you ask him to tone it down? And the, and the guy said, oh, he, I haven't talked to him. I said, well, do your damn job. Talk to him. And if he's still a pain in the ass, send him to me and I'll spank him. You know? <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman's going to go down as one of the greatest character actors that just in the last unbelievable, the roles he has done. Like the, If you look at the different characters, it's, it's black and white every time he goes in. And he's even played a couple of real life persons and really nailed it. No, it's every every molecule of him is is that character. It's mm. that's genius, you know. I just because he won an award for Chip, didn't he win? Uh, Academy he won the award? Oscar. He won the Oscar, did he? Mm. Yeah, for that role, he was unbelievable in that. This has been so fun. What about Phil? you? What is your prototype? I don't know. After no. talking to you, now I got to go away and revalue it. I was just kind of in the mindset of just get work, get work, get work. You're you're right about that. I'm not saying turn down work that you're not right. You know, <clears throat> if you get a job and you feel you're not right for it, but they want you, do it. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, be aware of where you want where you want to be living when you get the big break. Well, I, is, I I want to do look. I had this conversation with. I told you with the casting director and he said don't mention anything about the theater because I really want to do the big plays like Death of a Salesman um, I would love to in a couple of years do Streetcar I'm a massive fan of um, Samuel Beckett I would love in a later on in life to do Waiting for Godot things like that um, that's what I really, really want to do is theater. But then also, you know, you got to get into television, get into film. If you do enough TV and movies and you become well enough known and you're a good enough actor, the theater will beg you to come to them. So you don't have to worry about that. But then you look at this, the, the kind of actors like Marlon Brando, who never went back to the theater. Although we've got Larry Moss comes here once a year uh, to do his workshops. And I went to the one in Bondi last year and he just, he's so passionate about keeping the theater alive. You well, know, he, we, he is. And, he, and, but he, the people are not affording his prices by doing theater. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but he's, but you know, if you're passionate about, Billy Crudup is passionate about being with you. When he left me, and I knew he would, but he, he oh, he, was, he went with his responsible agent to CAA. And he said to the, he said to CAA, I will come with you. And the minute I hear that you are discouraged, you discourage a theatrical producer who asks about my availability, I will leave. And they've never done, they honor his total commitment to theater. But he became famous first. Right. So I think, um, you know, you don't, if you, listen, if, you, if you're talking to somebody who's an agent or a casting director, and they are just as passionate about the theater as you are, you'll, you'll know that. You'll sniff each other out. Yeah. You'll be able to tell that. Yeah. And so then you can talk about saying, well, what did you think of George C. Scott in this, you know, or... It really is the best training ground. I mean... Al, Pac Al, Al Pacino said that's where he that's where his acting came from was the years in the theater it is it's the theater and Al Pacino also says it's the audience 
The audience is yeah. the best teacher in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so you, sit, you stand there and you lie in front of an audience. There's, you'll, you, you'll learn that lesson for life. Never do that again. If they don't believe it, they'll hand you your ass. <laughs> Phil, thank you very much. Thank you for asking. I hope uh, we sell a few books. I hope I said some worthwhile things. Yeah, definitely. And um, for everybody out there, I definitely recommend having a look at breaking and entering. It's definitely beneficial. Thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. And I will hope uh, you're keeping safe over there in New York and get back to normal life soon. Well, what will be normal life after all of this? Well, I just want this all to blow away so I can see the Great Barrier Reef before I die. Are you coming <laughs> over here? I, it's a goal. It's a goal. Right, right. Listen.